The body of evidence is growing for this one nutrient, how important it is for our health, and 95% of the people in the United States are not getting enough of it. Recent research showed people who were deficient in this nutrient compared to smokers who got enough of it, the smokers live longer. Yep, you heard me right, the smokers live longer. Seems strange, right? Well, the data and research are showing just that. The research is also pointing to this being the only supplement that decreases the rate of aging and increases lifespan. That is a powerful statement. So let's get into it. Chris here, registered nurse, certified clinical nurse leader with my focus being research. What am I talking about? Omega-3 fatty acids. These fatty acids are found in different foods. There are plant sources and marine sources like fish. The plant source comes from foods like flaxseed or walnuts and produces a fatty acid called ALA or alpha-linoleic acid. Marine sources like wild-caught salmon contain two fatty acids, EPA or eicosapanatoic acid and DHA, doxahexaenoic acid. ALA from the plant source is considered an essential fatty acid, essential in that your body cannot make it. So you need to get it from food sources you eat. It is a metabolic precursor of the omega-3 fatty acids found in fish and fish oils, meaning your body can convert ALA into EPA and DHA, but the process is very inefficient. The majority of people are not very good at doing that. Therefore, it is extremely important we get enough DHA and EPA from the food sources or supplements. So let's talk about what omega-3s do in our body and what is their role. Before I do that though, I just want to say if you stick around to the end, you will be rewarded. I will give you a list of foods that are the highest in omega-3s with, with the least amount of toxins like mercury for example. And from my research, the best supplement to add to your diet that's got Consumer Labs endorsement right behind it. And if you like this type of information, please hit that like button and subscribe. This lets me know to keep putting out videos like this. Have you ever Googled the benefits of omega-3s? The first link and title that pops up from Healthline states the 17 science-based benefits of omega-3 fatty acids. The benefits are plentiful, like decreased risk of cardiovascular disease, decreased blood pressure, lowered inflammation, decreased risk of cancer, lower triglycerides, promotes good eye health, helps with depression, lowers risk of Alzheimer's and other mental disorders, promotes good brain health, helps with fetal development, good for infants, health and their development, including brain development, prevents blood clots, helps with rheumatoid arthritis. And I'm willing to bet this is just the tip of the iceberg. The question I think about when I go through this list of seemingly unrelated diseases and processes is, what is the relationship here? How do omega-3s fit in? Well, I think to understand this question and how important omega-3s are, we need to start at the foundation, what we are made of, and that is cells. Let's talk about what omega-3s do at the cellular level. Following ingestion, omega-3 fatty acids are incorporated into the cellular membranes of all tissues of the body. Whether you take a supplement or get it from natural sources, measurable changes in cellular membrane content occur within days of increasing your daily consumption. Some cellular membranes in our tissues, like our eyes or retina, are brain and our myocardium have much more fatty acids than other tissues. The bottom line here, they play a huge role in the proper functioning of the cell. Okay, now I want you to think back to biology 101. Cell membranes play a whole host of different functions in the body. They perform important roles in signaling or communication between other cells. For example, omega-3s and omega-6s compete for space on the cell membrane surface. They can attach to the same receptors. The main omega-6 fatty acid is arachidonic acid and when it is released released by cells, it transforms into thromboxanes, prostaglandins, and leukotrienes. These compounds are all responsible for a whole host of different activities, including activation of leukocytes and platelets, regulation of gastric secretions, induction of bronchoconstriction, and signaling of pain in nerve cells. Think inflammation and arachidonic acid metabolism as the target of the common over-the-counter meds we take, like aspirin and ibuprofen. Too much inflammation becomes a problem, right? I think it's pretty well known that chronic inflammation leads to disease. So too much omega-6 is inflammatory. Now listen up, this is important. Omega-3s directly affect arachidonic acid metabolism because they displace arachidonic acid from cell membranes and compete with arachidonic acid for the enzymes that catalyze the biosynthesis of these pro-inflammatory mediators. I just mentioned thromboxanes and prostaglandins and leukotrienes. Thus, the net effect of consuming more omega-3s is that the body synthesizes less of these powerful arachidonic acid-derived inflammatory mediators. 
indicators. Less inflammation and less platelet aggregation equals less risk of disease, thrombosis, and clots. In essence, it is a lessened reactivity against environmental stimuli. That affects us all. I hope you understand what I just described and how important this is. Perhaps now you can see how all those seemingly unrelated processes and diseases are tied together relative to omega-3 fatty acids. It's all about the chronic inflammation. But let's talk sources. I understand if you can't get that fresh wild-caught salmon, which is an excellent source of omega-3s. There's nothing wrong with supplementing in this case. You can even get a prescription from your doctor for omega-3 fatty acids. Personally, I supplement. I take two 1,280 milligram capsules per day with my meal. I buy from a company called Nordic Naturals. This company does not sponsor me. I did a bunch of research though, including looking them up at consumer labs to make sure that what they say is in there is actually in there and there aren't any harmful chemical fillers. I do recommend this product. If you do want to get your omega-3s from a food source, as I mentioned, salmon is great, but also mackerel and sardines are a great way to increase your omega-3 intake as well. I buy sardines and mackerel in the can. Some of you might be saying, Chris, I'm concerned about mercury poisoning or other toxic chemicals building up in the fish I eat. Now, this is important. There's some research out there that looked at pregnant mothers and gestational development, moms who ate lots of fish and plenty of omega-3s from marine sources, compared to moms who stayed away from fish entirely and the results were astounding. The moms that ate fish did have higher mercury levels than those that did not but the research showed that those who ate fish the babies on average had improved health and brain development and showed more intelligence through different tests administered. The mothers also showed no signs of mercury poisoning or toxicity and the researchers postulate that the EPA and DHA the omega-3s provide protection against mercury and that they are neuroprotective as well. Are you curious about what your omega-3 levels are? Next time you see your doctor, ask for an omega-3 index plus test. It measures the percentage of EPA and DHA in red blood cell membranes. Red blood cells turn over every 120 days. This test gives you the best snapshot of your omega-3 disposition. Similar to getting your HbA1c checked, hemoglobin A1c, which is your average blood sugar over the past two to three months. So where do you want your levels at? Most people in the United States are at about 5%. Research points to 8% as being the level to achieve. A 1.5 gram to 2 gram increase in intake brings you from 4% to 8%. Bill Harris, American professor and researcher focusing on human nutrition, is well known for his research related to omega 3s, cardiovascular disease, and neuropsychiatric neuropsychi diseases. In his research, he notes that those with an omega 3 index score of 8% live on average 5 years longer than those who average 5%. He also talks about a low consumption of marine sources like seafood as one of the top preventable causes of death, killing upwards of 84,000 people per year, while the ingestion of trans fat kills an average of 82,000 people per year. By simply upping omega-3s, you cancel out and add 2,000 fewer deaths per year. If you're interested in learning about more about omega-3s, I encourage you to check out his research. It's very cool stuff. The pathophysiology, the pathology of low omega-3s has been shown to increase inflammation. Chronic low inflammation increases the rate of aging and your risk for disease. Our bodies need omega-3s for so many reasons, but the most important in my opinion is its utility on the surface of the cell. There is no doubt that most of us are deficient. It can be tough to add to our diets, especially if you live where I live. Salmon season has been closed on the ocean and rivers for the last two years, but nothing wrong with supplementing in this case. Thanks for watching. Nurse Chris out.